Well, I say amen and amen. Don't you just love church? Man, I thank God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And uh, there's somebody's phone. Luke, is that yours? Glory to God. There it comes. <laughs> Praise God. Man, I love the hound out of that. I ain't never heard him sing. And uh, I appreciate all the singing tonight. And uh, I've always loved that last song. They're all good. And uh, I heard it years ago, old brother Jared Dixon, friend of a lot of us, first time I heard anybody sing it. And uh, it's always stirred my heart. And uh, I told Isaiah, I looked over at him, I said, brother, could you imagine being there to hear the word preach the word? I can't imagine what that was like, but one day, one day we will see and we will hear and thank God for it. And I appreciate all the Lord's already done tonight. And then me and Brother Ethan was talking just now. And you can already be turning to Genesis chapter 37, please. Uh, Genesis chapter 37. But me and Pastor was just talking a while ago about how awesome it also is to have several of the App State wrestlers here. And uh, appreciate the Lord getting them here. And I told them, I said, oh man, y'all the real deal. Uh, if you all the way up at App State wrestling, I said, so if anything goes bad tonight, I said, you boys protect me, all right? And uh, they said they got my back, so don't nobody get crazy in here, all right? They some big boys over there, and uh, they, they sort of itching. They need to get warmed up for the winter, all right? Uh, no, I'm kidding. I appreciate all the different ones and the churches, and what an honor to be together. And uh, we're humbled and thankful at what God did last night and uh, just how the Lord helped us in every part of the service and we're just standing all at the tremendous start the Lord's give us in these days. And uh, if I was to be honest with you, and I always try to be, when I left here last night, I, I figured uh, that God, now the Lord's, what I'm preaching tonight, I, the Lord's had it on my heart, and I've had it written down on my potentials, and I prayed over it. But I just kind of always figured that the Lord really wouldn't have me preach it. And uh, he would change it. And then last night, and then Brother Ethan got up and said, just make sure if you know anybody that needs the Lord, get them here tonight. Don't wait. I said, oh, yeah. I said, well, by morning, God will change my message. And I'll be preaching something about, you know, running from the Lord, salvation, grace, God, the cross. And, uh, but this is totally different than anything we've done so far. And it is a tremendous change up. But I could not get away from it from some time now studying and preparing to be here. Why you tell me that? Because I want you to know that if you're one of God's people and you've been battling and going through it, the devil's been just wrecking havoc in your life and you feel like you just don't know which way to turn and you're trying to give it all you got, but you feel like you're running out and your face running on life support and you're about on empty. God thought enough of you to put a total curveball message together and costly keep it on my heart. And it's just for you tonight. That's how much he loves. And this meeting ain't just for those that need God. And thank God that he is. And it ain't just for those that may be lost. And thank God that he is. But God even knows and he loves us just the same. And every now and then the core of the God's people in every church that works so hard. And you're the ones that are so faithful in the church where you go. And God's got us all here tonight on a Wednesday night together. And God wants to encourage us tonight. And I believe that's my task from heaven, to encourage and exhort you in the midst of the battle. You stand with me tonight if you don't mind, please. Genesis chapter number 37. And I'm only going to read you one verse now, but keep your Bibles open. We're going to work through the text and get several more as we look into some portions of the life of Joseph. The Bible says tonight in chapter 37... And verse number five, and Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it his brethren. Boy, that part sounds pretty good. But notice how it ends, ladies and gentlemen. And they hated him yet the more. And Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it his brethren. That means his daddy, means his family, his brothers. But the Bible says, and they hated him yet the more the more. By the help of God tonight for just a little while, I want to preach to you on this thought. When the dream goes dark. What do you do when the dream goes dark? Brother Terry Roberts, you pray for us, please, sir. Father God, we come to you, God, so humbly. 
Oh God. Oh God, help us tonight. Humble ourselves before you. <clears throat> God help us to preach as a dying man to dying people. Touch me as our little servant. I can't do it without you. Wouldn't want to try. May Christ, may the word of God be exalted. May the good word find good soil to bring forth fruit as the word says. Oh God, can't round about us. Bless the prayer teams, all the labors. Give great victory. Help me, God. Oh God, settle in amongst us. Your will be done. Save the lost, stir the saved. Help us tonight, God. Our eyes are on you. We need you. God, give us what we need. Thank you for what we've already got to feel, how we've got to worship. Thank you for church. Thank you for just real church, old-fashioned Holy Ghost worship. Help us tonight. God, we agree. Amen. You can be seated tonight. Well, this ain't necessarily the message tonight, but let me just fuel the flames of exactly how this whole thing started because many times when you find out that Joseph had a dream, but then the dream brought a lot of pain in his life, we immediately say, well, maybe we shouldn't dream. But let me just say tonight before the devil ever puts that in your heart that every single one of us under this tent, you ought to dream in your life. We so need some dreamers again in this day. We need young people that dream, but we need older folks that dream. All of us need to dream. And could I say it's good to have some physical dreams. I'm all about having spiritual dreams. You ought to dream of marrying someone godly and having children and dream of a family serving the Lord and dream about seeing them get saved in the altar and seeing your church have revival. And we ought to dream about God doing big things on this mountain. And we're all in this together. And we all know that spiritual dreams are good. And I hear here tonight to tell you dream big he's a big God pray big prayers he's a big God but hear me tonight God also wants you to dream physically God wants you to dream about having a good job in the will of God. God wants you to dream about having a business if that's the will of God. I've heard people preach before almost to the point that if you even want to have any money or work hard for any money, it's a sin. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. I mean, a pastor gets up or a preacher gets up and you preach against you folks having money. Who in the world do you think is going to pay your salary in the church lights? My dad told me, he said, man, don't preach down to them boys working. He said, just remember, somebody's got to pay the bills. It's okay to have stuff and money as long as it don't have you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. I mean, somebody's got to be rich in this world. It ought to might as well be God's people. Can I get a witness? We can do something for the gospel. I appreciate you businessmen. Hey, you business ladies. I appreciate those of you that are blue collar workers. I appreciate those of you that work with your mind or work with your hands. You're all important in the work of God and everybody has their place. And I come to encourage you tonight to dream some big dreams. Say, God, if you'll do this and I believe it's your will, I'll make sure to put you first and I'll be a giver and I'll give back to the ministry and the gospel. I'm here to tell you tonight, it's not only just just okay to dream. It is the heartbeat of God that you dream. He's looking for a generation again that would dream dreams that man would say is crazy, but that's what God loves because guess what? When it's impossible with me and God does it, he gets all the praise, honor, and glory. Oh, we ought to dream physically. We ought to dream spiritually in all areas of our life because listen, if you ain't got a dream, you ain't got purpose. And if you don't have purpose, you won't have passion for the things of God. Something's got to drive us. Something's got to push us. But how many of you know, even when God gives you a dream, God don't get in a hurry. And that's where spiritual warfare kicks in. See, I usually will be standing at point A and God will show me a promise or a dream. He'll put something in my heart and it's point B. And Brother Tim Cook, guess what? You know what I'll think? I'll say, boy, that ain't a long distance, Luke. I'll say, man, I'm right here. That's just over yonder. I mean, I know the direct route. I can about see it. I'll say, God, me and you's gonna get there quick. And I'll know a left turn right out the gates, the way to go, and God will go right. God sure don't operate like Google Maps does. Boy, on that Google Maps, you can press shortest distance, fastest route, calculate the traffic, tell you when to leave. Google Maps weighs all of them. Avoid delays, go around rigs, get you through the elbows, get you everywhere you need to go, and you will get there as fast as you can. But heaven don't have no GPS like we do. 
God is not interested in the destination near as much as he is the journey. Not long ago, I remember, and I get into it tonight, but old Cody Roberts, all y'all know I'm just up here singing tonight if you don't. And man, me, him, and John do a lot of stuff together. Me and John, we're sort of live wires. I mean, me and John, we're pretty high strung. We always trying to get somewhere and get this and do that. And we're ready to hammer down. Brad, Cody, on the other hand, he's for the journey. He don't get in a hurry for nothing. At times, this man's so crazy, he will turn the highways and everything off on his phone. We got a nine-hour trip, and him and Abby before have gone two hours out of the way. And he, I said, man, that tears my nerves up. Why are y'all doing it? He said, man, we're just going to enjoy the journey, see what we see. <laughs> One time he forgot he had that on for them, and me, him, and John was headed down to Mississippi, and we go that way all the time, so we know the route. And I remember waking up, took a little nap, and I said, Cody, where in the world are we? I don't recognize this. And we got to looking at it, and he had highways turned off. And man, we didn't go an hour out of the way. Me and John's about ready to lose our mind. Hey, Cody said, man, just calm down. Enjoy the journey. We're going to get there. Anyhow, look at all this pretty view. I'm in the back going. I like vacation, but I don't enjoy the trip. I want to get there, enjoy, and I want to get home. Hammer down. But guess what? God is trying to teach us something. Cody is on to something there. You only have one life to live, and there's only one journey to take, and you're not going to bypass God's detours. You're not going to talk God into going a quicker route or the route you like. Heaven only has one route, and that is the holy, sovereign, perfect will of God. And God knows what's best for us. He didn't just get Joseph to a throne but he had to take him on a trip where not only Joseph could get on the throne, but Joseph could handle the throne. God is not only just trying to get us to a dream becoming a reality, but he's trying to get us where we can handle the dream when we get there and we won't rob God of glory and shut heaven up from blessing our lives. And so in the midst of when heaven is detouring and when heaven is doing things we don't understand, the devil starts talking. And you know, a lot of times we'll say something like this, church. Well, I just can't find God. I just can't hear from him. I don't know what's wrong. God was so near. He gave me such a promise. I've done everything I can to be faithful to church and the promise. Hey, Victory Baptist Church, I've done everything I can to follow Brother Ethan who's following God. And I've given to the mountain. I'm working for the mountain. I'm pouring everything in. I'm faithful, but it's gone dark and hell's in my ear and I can't find God in the other ear. And it seems like God's abandoned me and I need help. What in the world is going on? And when you don't feel like God's talking, the devil sure does a lot. And that's where the title goes, when the dream goes dark. The military has what we would call a, a, a motto, if you will, or so it's, a, it's a form of how they do in battle. And here's what they call it. It says, when they go dark. What's that mean? Well, when the military goes dark, it means that the enemy is all around. And when they want to make sure that they make sure that none of the enemy can hear what they're saying, they will switch the channels. They will go to unknown frequencies and only certain important people will even know what channel they're on. Not everybody's here in the general. Not everybody's here in headquarters. Not everybody even knows what's going on and they've gone dark and it's not because they're mad at the soldiers and it's not because they're failing the soldiers but it's because the admirals, it's because of headquarters is saying for your protection, for your good, we're gonna go dark for a little while and only communicate with the necessities so that the enemy don't know you're there, so that the enemy don't find out what we're up to and wreck your life. And you hear me tonight, when heaven goes dark and when the dream goes dark, it is not because God ain't speaking. It could be that God and the angels that he's put in charge to execute and to protect in our life have changed the channel because the enemy's all around and to ensure hell doesn't know what's going on. God may be talking in a frequency that you and me doesn't know, but that it's not because headquarters doesn't love us. It's because headquarters in heaven does love us and God's protecting us and God's looking out for us and God's got a plan and God's going to do some big things. But if we quit in the silent times, if we quit when it seems like it's on guard, we'll miss everything God's about to do. And so when heaven goes dark, boy, the devil goes to talking. And I want to give you two or three of these tonight of what he'll do, some strategies of Satan. Hope to encourage you, I'll take my seat. Notice with me, first of all, notice this strategy from the devil. 
he begins to amplify the pains from difficulties. What do you mean, preacher? Look with me tonight at verse 23. Joseph dreamed a dream. His brethren hated him. Look at verse 23. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was upon him, and they took him and cast him into a pit. Can you imagine now? One day this young teenage boy dreamed a dream that he would be in charge of Egypt. He would be right under the king, the pharaoh, the only man, that, the man that ruled nearly the whole world and then he would be right under him. He can't believe this dream. He's going to go from a poor little boy out in the fields of his father to being literally right underneath the most important man in the world. And he tells his brethren and they hated him. They may not have told him right away. They may not have said but in their heart they were jealous. And jealous is as cruel as the grave. And this young man's excited. He's passionate. He's got zeal. He's got big dreams. He's got a plan. He's got a word from God. And he goes back to doing what's right. He's a humble servant of his father. He's doing what he's told. One day, daddy says, go check on the boys. Run out where they're at. They see him coming. And the anger is so much in them. They said, he's already got that coat. He's already daddy's favorite. We ain't bowing down to him too. We gonna stop what God seems to be doing in his life. And this man gets blindsided. Joseph, just a 17, 18 year old young man, his whole mind and his whole life blows apart and he comes up not to some strangers, not even to just some friends, but to his own blood, Brother Luke, and they jerk him up and he's probably saying, hey man, we love each other. What y'all doing? They're pulling this coat off. They're dragging him over to the hole. They wanted to kill him, but God put it in a brother's heart or two and Reuben and them boys saved his life, but they throw him in a hole. And can you imagine now, as Joseph sits in the bottom of this hole looking up and say why y'all doing that this hurts I thought we were family I thought we loved each other boy God wants to help somebody tonight if you'll listen and let him listen the dream's real but so is the difficulties and all of a sudden Joseph is saying this wasn't part of the journey this wasn't the shortest route to Egypt and the throne. This ain't got nothing to do with God's plan for my life. Why am I here? This makes it worse, not better. This ain't helping the dream. This is hurting the dream, at least from human perspective. And he's saying, God, where in the world are you? And no doubt he felt like God was a million miles away. And his family's hurt him. He's got nobody to turn to. He's been betrayed. He's been broken. And now he sits there realizing the pain that comes from the difficulties of a dream. Say, preacher, what in the world's all that got to do with me? Boy, some of you, you didn't know three or four years ago when God bought a mountain just how difficult it could be at times. Oh, can we just get real tonight? Oh, we're glad the building's going up. That's wonderful. But guess what? There's a whole lot of us in here tonight. I ain't got no skin in the game. So all I can do is look and say, glory to God, I love that big building. That's wonderful. But they several dozen people that had to help sign that loan just to get it to go through. And if that building don't get paid for, they may have to sell their house. That wasn't part of the dream. I mean, God, you told us about the mountain. You told us all this. Why are you making us do all this? God, and now I've done all that. Why's my family struggling? Why's my child this? God, I try to pray. I try to back my preacher up. Some of you are from other churches here tonight. You're the most faithful. You're the cream of the crop. There's probably the best that this whole county's got here tonight. You come because your preacher asks. You love your church. And instead of laying at home and saying nobody will know, we moved our service. You even come up here to sweat on the mountain. You're here every night. You love God. You love your church. You're doing your best. You tithe. You give. You work. You love God. You love people. But you're fighting and you're battling. The mental warfare is about this. To get you. The physical problems are about to get you. We all are up against something different than the other. None of our stories are the same but just as was said a while ago whether you're sitting in a hospital with your baby having a hole in their heart or whether you're sitting in your bathtub with you crying your eyeballs out because you can't get your thoughts together all the warfare is the same and it's real. It may be even harder to fight the interior warfare because nobody sees your struggle. All of it's real tonight and Joseph is a great reminder to us that the dream's real and the end will be real and God will bring it to pass and God cannot lie but there will be some difficulties 
And the devil will try to tell you them difficulties are there because God's failed or God don't love you. And you better be smart enough to recognize that it ain't that God don't love you, it's that he really does love you. Because how many of you know when you go to the gym, boys, y'all got to hit them weights. I've played sports all my life. You got you to work hard if you want to be great. And guess what? You don't win a game on game night. You win it at practice. You win it in the gym. And you know what makes you stronger? Resistance. You know how you get stronger? You got to put more weight on. And you can't put too much on because you can't handle it. God knows how much we need. But you just keep pushing and you keep showing up every day. And six months you'll bench more than you did six months ago. And then a year you'll do more. And the more resistance, the more strength. And the more you keep pushing, you may fail every now and then. But keep coming back and eventually what crushed you a week ago, you can push up this week. And that's spiritually how it works. You hear me tonight. God birthed this in my heart deep. Resistance does not birth the dream, but it does build the dreamer. I wrote that down on an airplane preparing to be able to preach that in these meetings and in this summer season. I want you to hear that tonight. Resistance does not birth the dream, but it does build the dreamer. The problems, the pains you're going through, it's not so the dream can come to pass, but it's so you and me can handle the dream when it comes to pass. It's not trying to build the dream. God's got that under control. He holds the whole world in his hands. He's a big God, but we have a choice and a free will. He's He's building dreamers. He's trying to get rotten flesh where we can handle the blessings of God. Don't run from God when the pains come. Don't quit when the detours come. That's God letting you know that it may not be easy, but it will be worth it. And heaven may have gone silent, but God is still at work. Pains from the difficulties. The devil will try to tell you, God don't love you. That's his strategy. How about this one? Pit holes of discouragement. Notice the end of verse 24 now. And throw him in this pit, right? And the Bible says the pit was empty at the end of verse 24. There was no water in it. This is very important that you understand the details. Every word in your blessed old Bible is true. Watch this now. Brother Luke, come help me right quick, would you? Take his jacket here. He ain't got to put it back on. He's got that coat of many colors. Shows the favor of the Father. It's his identity to the Father. It's his connection to his Father. It lets everybody know that he's the joint heir, that all the blessings come with what he's attached to his Father, all the authority of his Father, all the glory, everything. It's all wrapped up in what his daddy's gave him. First thing them boys did is they pulled that jacket off. And they said, you ain't gonna have that. You know what the first thing the devil always tries to do? He'll try to strip you of your identity. Because if he could convince us like Joseph that we don't really belong to God or something ain't really real. Or what about this? He'll tell you all them promises in the Bible and everything that preacher's saying. It's good and it's still true for everybody else, just not you. I got all the faith in the world for your needs. I'll pray with you. See me tonight. I, I mean, I got all faith. But when it comes to me, I know God will do it for you. But boy, it's a little harder when it's me and I got the problem and I'm in the pit. They stripped him of his coat to try to get him to think that he don't belong and he don't have what he had. And yes. they're trying to, because listen, if God's people don't have hope and faith, we ain't got nothing. If the devil can convince us that God is done with us or God ain't going to use us or God's to everybody else, but he's forgot about me, you're done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then notice, when he pushes him down in that pit, we'll just pretend his seat's that pit hole. The Bible is very particular to let us know and there was no water in it. Why is that? Because when water's running in your Bible, it's a picture of the Holy Spirit of God. And ladies and gentlemen, when water's standing still, it's the Word of God. So you know what the devil did in his strategies of trying to stop Joseph? And trying to, because we understand that God's in charge of everything. The devil may be the devil, but he's still God's devil. Everything in your life had to come with the approval of heaven, and that means it come with the grace of God for us to go through it. But notice how the devil tries to work on the back end of God trying to build a dreamer. God's wanting to use it to build you. The devil's trying to use what you're going through to destroy you and turn you against God and each other and the things of God. And all of a sudden, the devil slides in and says, Joseph, you know there's no water in here. And all of a sudden, 
He's in a dry, dark place that wasn't supposed to be a part of the dream. Can I tell you, some of the hardest days of my life wasn't when I almost died with Stephen Johnson's and food poisoning and a bad shot in Mexico and it's only the grace of God that I'm alive. That's not the worst days I've ever had. It wasn't even that while I was there dying with Stephen Johnson's, my wife was nearly passed out from having a bad deal with UC and God healed her of it. But for a season of a couple of years there, UC was gripping our whole family. It was destroying my wife's body. Here I got still. That was really bad to be out of the country and scared to death I was dying and couldn't get home and my wife's passing out with UC. That's pretty bad. But you hear me tonight? I'm only telling you that to say this. That ain't the worst times I've ever been through. The hardest things I've ever been through in my short life is when I find myself believing God and I got promises and I got dreams and I got big things the Lord said he's going to do and I'm excited and I'm doing my best to serve God and I, as far as I know, there's no unconfessed sin and I'm living right and I'm doing right and I'm trying to love God, love people. I'm right with man, I'm right with God and everything's right and then all of a sudden, I'm in a pit. and Everything goes dark and everything goes dry. And I can read my Bible, but I ain't getting nothing. I can pray for hours and I can't hear from God. There's been seasons of time where everybody else would be blessed and I couldn't feel God. I couldn't hear God. And I'd say, God, you're blessing them and God, you're using them. And God, I'm well aware you're in the building tonight. Listen, I have literally went to a pulpit before and preached thinking that there was absolutely no anointing on me. I couldn't feel God. I just knew, well, at least the words are coming out. And all of a sudden, I ain't even done with the message. And three or four people come and profess Christ and say that they got saved and people shouting all over the building and I go to the house and I ain't felt God at all. And I'm thinking, well, I, I, I'm pretty sure he was here because I seen them and I seen that one get saved and I saw so and so get help and God, you was doing it for them, but God, where are you? And the devil says, your coat's gone. And the devil says, God's forgot about you. There's no water. That Bible ain't gonna help you. The Holy Ghost is forsook you. He ain't gonna help you. Praying ain't gonna do it. You've been praying, it ain't worked. You've been reading, it ain't gonna work. You just might as well give up and quit. Ain't hey, something wrong with you or God's gonna do it for them and not you. You know the mind game's the mind. Listen, the battle in our day is between our ears and our mind. And I just come to encourage you tonight that it is a real reality. You are not by yourself. That's what the devil tries to tell us. That's what he did with me. He'd say, all them other preachers ain't struggling like you. You better not tell nobody. They'll think you're weak. They'll think you ain't spiritual. But I come to tell you tonight, I've fought battles and I'm sure you have too. I've struggled with doubt with this meeting and I bet you have too. I've fought to pray at times and I bet you have too. There ain't nobody under here that's arrived tonight. Pit holes are not easy. Discouragement is real. Depression is real. Times when God leaves us to ourselves and we're on detours or we're in unconfused territory and we're in places we don't recognize and we say this ain't part of the journey and we feel like our life's just spinning out of control and none of it makes sense. We got to anchor ourselves to something and we better make our minds up that if Jesus loved us enough to die for us when we was unlovable, then he sure loves us enough to do what's best in our life every day. If you can't believe the verse, all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. If you can't believe that verse, how are you going to believe John three sixteen that he died for? It's either all right or it's got to be all wrong because we wouldn't know where the heirs are. And the pit holes are such a real reality. Boy, there's been times in my life God's put some big things in my heart, but I'm just stuck. Some of you tonight, you might just feel stuck. You're doing everything you can to live for God right, but your prayers ain't being answered. Your lost people ain't getting saved. Your family ain't getting fixed. And the more you try, the worse it gets. The more you try, the more intense the battle gets. And you're living on life support. And you face down to nothing. And you don't want to tell anybody. And you're wondering, is it worth it tonight? Can I just be real with you? I have those same experiences in my life. And I have faith failures just like you probably do tonight. But here's the reality. Joseph struggled, no doubt. Joseph no doubt had them warfares but he made his mind up that if he had to believe somebody he'd believe God not the devil we better know the devil's strategy he's trying to amplify the negative but we gotta remember tonight God has got a plan and he's up to something and always remember this when you can't track God you gotta trust him 
There's going to be some times you can't track God and figure out what he's doing in our life. The Bible told us his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. But when you can't track him, you've got to just trust him like a little child with their parents. Here's the last one. Notice with me also Potiphar's house of decision. Chapter number 39, verse number 12. And she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. Now, some, a lot of us in here may not know this story tonight, so let me catch you up. Joseph's in that pit. There's no water. There's no coat. There's no favor. There's no God. He feels like, I'm going to be left here to die. God, the dream, how can this be part of the dream? God, if you leave me here, you're a liar, but I don't see how there's a way out. And the devil's beating his brains out. And then all of a sudden, it, like God, God's always working in the shadows. He's in the pit and can't do nothing. But ain't you glad when we can't do anything and we're down to nothing, that's what God specializes in. When we run out of ways to fix it, that's usually when God gets ready to move. The old brethren's over here and they're scheming and they're talking. And they look up and say, well, wait a second, here comes Egypt. Oh, here comes one of them brigades down there. Let's just sell him to them. That'll be easy. We can't kill him because the blood will be on our hands, y'all, right? We can't leave him in this hole. Daddy might find him. Let's just put him in slavery and he'll ease our conscience. And they think that's their thoughts. But that was actually God. Yeah. Understand tonight, God's never had a secondary thought. God's never had a plan B because God already knows what everybody's going to do. And you know what God's doing? God's saying exactly what Joseph come to realize by the end of his life when he looked at his brethren, when they realized it was him and they realized the dream come true and they felt bad and they were sorry. And Joseph said, don't worry about it, boys. Ye meant it unto evil. The devil was using you. He said, but God meant it unto good. You understand tonight, as long as you're walking by faith, and we'll fail at times. Me and Brother Daniel was just talking about this out back. God will not throw judgment in our life. God will not deal harshly with us. God will not just throw us out the back door because we fail. The truth is, is what's our heart behind it. So preacher, I... I should have prayed better the last month. I wanted to, but I was in such a battle. I struggled. God has mercy. He knows that. What will get you in trouble with God and cause your dreams to crumble and cause the judgment of God to come in your life is willful sin or disobedience. But if you're just trying from a heart of God, I didn't want to fail. I wanted to please you. You're still on track. God's got a plan. So they sell him down to Egypt. And to make a long story short, the hand of the Lord's on Joseph. Can I tell you, it don't matter if you wound up in the middle of Saudi Arabia. If God's on you, you can't do nothing but win. You understand if God dropped you in the middle of that maniac in Iran and told you to walk up to him and say, you're a scoundrel and you better get saved or you're going to die and go to hell. You couldn't die unless God wanted you to. We got to get back to believing God. He can't kill you. That's why if you fear man, the Bible says it's a snare. If you're in the will of God and you're walking with God, you have nothing to fear. But what sin and disobedience can do to you, there's not enough devils in hell to stop the plans of God as long as we're walking with him. The hand of the Lord was on him. The hand of the Lord was on him. The Bible says over and over and over. So guess what? He winds up down at Potiphar's house. That is not Pharaoh. That's not the king. So watch why God does this. See, if you learn how, why God did in Joseph's life, it'll help you understand what he's doing in our life. Yes. Why did God let things blow apart after he got to Potiphar's house, wound up running his house, wound up with some money, wound up with a good little gig going and having a good life because Joseph would have never wanted to leave to chase the rest of the dream if God wouldn't have made something happen to drive him out. Sometimes God is letting the rough things happen and the battles come and the breakings come and the discouragements come and the difficulties come and the pains you're going through because God don't want you and me to settle for just good or just for average. But God wants us to make sure that we get all the will of God. Young people, I tell them this all the time. I preach to them all summer. I'd rather preach to young people than anybody in the world because their whole life's in front of them. And here's the hardest thing and the most important thing that a preacher does in front of young people is the 
convince them that God sees more potential and God has more purpose in their life than they could ever see or dream in their self and not to sell their self short and let the world run their life, but to sell out to God. I can have more fun sleeping now, right with God than I used to awake running for this world. You can be saved and have a big time and enjoy life. There's nothing like living for God. And God, real love does what's best. And so sometimes God does things that even hurts his heart. He don't like to see us cry and suffer. It moves God. God no doubt has a heart for us. He weeps for us. He says, I don't want to do this. He's a better father than I am. And there's times that I have to do things for my children that I know they ain't going to like. But if I really love them, I got to do it. So God looked down and said, Joseph, you fixing to sell yourself short. You fixing to not fulfill it all. And so God allows this devilish woman, Potiphar's wife, to try to commit adultery with him. Watch now. No one's around. The devil gives him the perfect opportunity to get away with it. But that's why I told you you've got to be a dreamer. Something has got to drive you to not sin and blow your life apart on God. That's why I told you last night you need a burden for souls. You need somebody that will drive you. And Joseph said, wait a second. He said, ma'am, I can't do that. Nobody's here. Come in here. We'll have our good time. Nobody will ever know. It'll just be me and you. And he looks at her and he says, nobody else may know. He said, but I serve a most high God in heaven. And he said, he's been good to me. And even on my worst of days, listen, if anybody should have been bitter, if anybody should have had a good case of the mutley grubs and had a good excuse and been Joseph, he should have said, well, I deserve this. I ought to have a little pleasure. God's not been good to me. God's let all this happen in my life. I don't deserve to have to go through this. So I'll do what I want to. But Joseph had enough character and spirituality to say, I don't know how, but God can't lie. And he promised me that I was going to the throne and that dream's too real. And I love God and I don't want to break his heart and that's too real in my life as well. And he said, I couldn't do that to your husband. He's been good to me. He said, but more importantly, I can't do that to God. He deserves my best. Hey, listen, you hear me tonight. A character that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. Who you are is not the person you're able to put on and be at church. It's not even the Christian that you're perceived to be when you're with your family and everybody's watching. But what kind of Christian are you when nobody's around and you know you can get away with it? You'll know if you're really faithful to your wife. Don't tell me where your eyes wander to when she's sitting beside you. You know you'll get caught. What you do when you're in the car alone or at work? What you do when she can't see you or vice versa, ladies. Young people, not when your family's around or your youth pastor's around or somebody's there for you. What kind of person are you when there ain't nobody around you can get away with it? That'll tell you what kind of character, what kind of love you really got for God. And Joseph, I'm about done tonight. Joseph, even in the dark, even when the dream had gone dark, Even when heaven had gone into blackout mode and heaven had gone silent and even with all his wounds and his pain, even with all that spiritual warfare and no doubt he was fighting the devil himself because Satan had nowhere better to be that day than to try to stop God birthing a nation and God using Joseph. Joseph said, who I am in God has got to mean something even in the dark. And Joseph made a decision that changed the rest of his life. Can I tell you something tonight, folks? The Christian life is full of decisions. And what you decide on a night like tonight will change the the, the course of the rest of this meeting. Because if the core from these churches don't go all in with God and say, I'm back, listen, I'm either going to recommit myself to the dream or I'm going to be honest, preacher, I've dropped some of my dreams and I've dropped some of the spiritual dreams that God's put in our churches and in this county and on this mountain. I've either backed up or I'm over here just saying, Lord, I don't want to back up. But if we don't go all in with God and if we don't say, Lord, I'm willing to make the journey no matter where it takes me, what I go through, it's worth it. 
if we don't do our part, we can forget about what all God would have for us. If Joseph would have chose wrong, he would have never saw that dream on that throne. But because he got his part right, God did his part. The choice is ours, but not the consequences. You make the right choice, you'll find God will give you the best things and things you never dreamed would come. Who knows what all God would do in these days if we'll do our part. But if we get it wrong, the consequences will be a life of regret and of consequences of judgment and failure and people saying, I wanted to come to that mountain, but I guess I didn't because you missed God. There's a lot on the line. I give you this little story tonight. I'm done. Some of you may know. How many of you ever heard of Brother Steve Parrish, the preacher? Brother Steve Parrish tonight. Several of you have. He's preached at a lot of the meetings. Some of y'all heard him at Jubilee or Brother Daniels. A great man of God from Mississippi. And uh, preacher Steve Parrish was also in the military. He was in the National Guard all of his life. And when he was about 40 years old, he was a sergeant. Uh, the Iraq war was in the heat of it. And, uh, and the military, the, the leaders, they called up his platoon. And called up that whole group out of North Mississippi and said, we're going to train you for six months and we're sending you to the heat of the battle and the triangle of death in Iraq. And they told Brother Steve, they said, now listen, you don't have to go. He said, you're already up around 40 years old. You've aged up. He said, it's your choice, but you don't have to go. We'll send other men, put somebody else in charge. And he thought about it, prayed about it, and he said, I can't do that. He said, this country's been good to me for all these years. He said, I owe it to them. So that man signed up and went. Talking about character. Talking about having something that you know is worth dying for. Having a cause. Loves this country. Watch this now. They got over there and he said, brother, you wouldn't believe what all goes on. He said, they's just sack full of money that shows up. He said, you want to know the most sketchy, swirly people you ever met in your life? He said, it's them CIA dudes that ain't got no identity. He said, they'll just show up at the base and the general in charge will say, all right, you're in charge of protecting this man. We'll send you somewhere. We'll give you coordinates. We're going to go in the middle of the night. You're going to make sure he gets there safe. He'll go in. You stay out. He'll do whatever he's got to do. He'll come back out. You get him back to this base safe. He said, man, we set down them Humvees. And he said, it'd be a big old sack he'd drop beside him. And he'd say, man, what's that? He said, oh, that's a million dollars. Cash. American cash. He said, what are we doing? He said, oh, we just got to pay off a few people so we can get intelligence. We just pit one against the other and we're paying them off so we can win the war. He said, man, he said, over there, he said, you know, anybody you killed, you could keep their gun. And he said, I had AKs hanging all off me. He said, I'd even fight with them AKs. I liked them better than them ARs. He said, but the government always said you can't keep no money, no jewelry, no personal items. You can only keep the gun. Now hear me tonight, this will really sum up this and this will help us. He said one night we had a big raid and he said nobody was else was there but me and my boys. And he said, man, we've paid a high price. He said, we've been over there without our families. We've suffered. We've been wounded. Some of us had done been blown up. And he said, we got all kind of reasons to say we deserve it. He said, we took that house and killed them boys and took that and got that place cleared out. He said, we got in that back room. He said, there was a sack full of a massive amount of American money that they had stolen somewhere or got paid with. And he said, all them boys are licking their chops. They said, man, ain't nobody here. It's just us. They ain't no general to get us in trouble. Nobody ever know. Let's stash this back where we're sleeping. Let's hide this in our luggage. We'll split it amongst the little platoon of us and we'll keep it. But then they all looked to Brother Steve because he's the man in charge. That's their sergeant. And they got that look like, surely you agree with us. Look what we've been through. Look at all this darkness. Look at all this battle. Look at all this suffering we've done. The government don't give us. They don't care about us. They ain't give us. They'll waste all this money. It'd be better for us. And Brother Steve said, I'm standing there with a decision to make. And all the pressure in the world's on me. And he told me, he said, Brother Heath, he said, about that time, I was asking God. He's a good saved man. A lay preacher led music at his church. He wasn't a pastor in them days. He said, I said, God, what am I going to do? He said, boy, I felt all that war on the inside and me men looking at me. Oh, yeah. He said, about that time, I caught a glimpse of my uniform. He said, I saw that American flag patch. And he said, God did something on the inside of me. And he said, he gave me a word. And he said, I walked over to them boys. 
And he said, men, listen to me. I want it as bad as you do. I don't want you to be mad at me. He said, but men, I know ain't nobody here to tell on us and I know we can get away from it. But you hear these words tonight. He said, but men, here's the truth. He said, even in the darkness, when nobody will know, he said, that patch has got to mean something. He said, that's what makes us different than all this worldly, ungodly military. He says, because we got something that matters. We got something bigger than ourselves that we've pledged allegiance to. And he said, if we lower our character and make the wrong decision here, who knows what we'll do next? And we won't have honor and we'll go home and we'll, we won't have honor. We'll be disappointed in ourselves one day. He said, this flag, this badge has got to mean something. And when he told me that in Texas, my God Almighty, something jolted up on the inside of me and I felt the Holy Ghost say that any of us here tonight that are saved that are trying to walk with God, not just preachers, but any Christian that you love God tonight, you're flying under a banner. We're soldiers in the Lord's army tonight. That Christian flag is what our banner, that's what we pledge allegiance to. My greatest allegiance ain't to America. It's to that Christian flag. It's to the Savior who died. It's to the church that I'm a part of. And you hear me tonight, even when it goes dark and even when nobody will know no, we've got to do what's right. That badge has got to mean something. Who we serve has got to mean something. And if we'll sell out, and if we'll be loyal to the Lord like them boys was to the country, there's a God that'll bring the dream to pass. What are you saying, preacher? Now, here it is. I'm done, closed. While we're on this mountain, we're in an army together. That badge has got to mean something. We'll blink this meeting will be over. And when Wednesday night rolls back around, you need to be a church. They're counting on you. That badge has got to mean something. When the devil says sin, you got to say, my people's counting on me. That badge means too much to do what my flesh wants. What about when the devil and your flesh says quit? You got to say, man, look around tonight. They're all counting on me. I can't quit. I can't just go AWOL for the next few weeks. I can't just not show up at the mountain. I can't do that to my pastor in church the rest of the year. I can't be up and down and in and out. My pastor's counting on me, my people, my family, lost people. Hey, that badge has got to get in our heart tonight. We got to let that let God begin to stir in our heart again and move on us. And we got to realize we're living for something bigger than ourselves. And some of you look like I'm crazy tonight, but I'm trying to preach to you, kid it. And I'm trying to give you yeah, my cuss. I'm preaching. I can't hardly breathe no more tonight. I'm giving you my heart. And under God, I wish you would care. I wish you would get a hold of this thing. Some of you staring around. Some of you can't wait till we close. And I know you got to be tired tonight. I know some of you has worked all day. But I promise you, I ain't fooled around today neither. We've been with God. And we're in this thing with you. And I come tonight, not to fuss, but in love and passion. Say, let's go together. Because we can't do it without you. God wants to do some big things. There's some big dreams. But God requires all of us to go together. That badge has got to mean something. Oh, that salvation would get big. Oh, that we'd say, I'm saved. God saved me. I'm part of the church. God's been so good to me. The least I can do for a God that died for me is live for him. Live for him. And, I, and the last one, sin, quitting. But listen, what about half-hearted? You can actually never quit church but quit. Do you know who the most dangerous soldiers are? It's not the boy sitting back at the camp sucking his thumb saying, I'm scared of the battle and I ain't going. At least you know he ain't going to fight. Brother Steve told me the scariest thing is when you're in the middle of the battle. Hear me tonight. When you're in the middle of the battle, and they somebody that half their heart ain't there. And they're sort of halfway fighting or they're sort of acting like whatever, but they don't really care. You hear me tonight? That's how people get killed. That's how you can lose your family or lose people that you love. That's how you can miss God. That's how the dream can be shattered. Is because you can have your hand on the gun. And you can be right in the middle of the battle, but you're so weary or you're so full of doubt 
or the badge don't have enough drive. You ain't got a cause big enough to fight and risk your life for. So instead of trying to win, you're just trying to live and exist. And you're just trying to satisfy the devil. You're just trying to get the devil to leave you alone. You're just trying to make it easier. And you know what happens? While you or me, if we go that route, are hiding out. These other people that all the bullets are flying after them. And they was counting on us to try to help them. And we ain't helping at all. Hey, listen. There's too much at stake. That badge has got to mean something tonight. Hey, some people in here, they've given their whole life to this, but they can't do it by themselves. And this wasn't in the message, but I'm going to say it tonight. Austin, you come. I'm going to tell you something tonight in love, and I'm going to go sit down. There's a small group usually in every church that totes the load. Can I be honest with you? Sometimes they just get tired. There's a small load from multiple churches that are toting this mountain right now. And some of them may even watch this video later. It's time you get involved. They're weary, they're tired, and they can't do it by themselves. And if we're going to really win and see God move, some of you that's on the fringe, some of you that you ain't really put in and you know it, you ain't hardly prayed, you're here, I thank God you're here. But some of you here because it's Wednesday night, you ain't been yet, you don't plan to come back. That's your choice. But you hear me, God's going to hold you accountable. Your church is behind this meeting. Your preacher said it's God's will. You, You can go your way. But I love you enough to tell you your family's on the line. Your dream's on the line. God's goodness in your life's on the line. And I come to tell you tonight, I've done made my mind up. Ethan's done made his mind up. Hey, some people around here, hey, done made their mind up. There's preachers, there's servants, there's cooks, there's workers. Hey, there's men laying out of this tent praying day and night. Hey, done made their mind up that it's worth it. But we come to ask you tonight, Would you make the same decision we have? That the badge is worth it. And you hear me tonight, if you'll honor God, and if you'll stand by the things that's on God's heart, God will stand by the things back at the house that's on your heart. You do God's business, and you do God's burdens, He'll do yours. If you'll throw in and go all in like Joseph, even when it's dark, I promise you, there's a God that will bring it to pass in your life. And God will pay you back more than it ever cost you. But we got to decide tonight in the middle of hell raging and all the confusion and the doubt and all the choices and all the easy routes. Is the badge worth it? Let's stand all over the building. (coughs) Charleston's going to sing for us tonight. You mind God. (coughs) You mind God tonight. Only God would give us the right burdens. Oh, that God would let us see all the good things He wants to do. Oh, that God would let us dream. Young people, let's come dream big. Don't sell yourself short. Senior saints, you're still alive. Dream big. God's still got a plan. Let's dream tonight. Let's recommit ourselves to the dreams. Let's recommit ourselves to the promises God's put in your heart for them lost people for them burdens you're carrying or for them dreams you're believing and looking to. No place tonight to fold up and quit. The devil's a liar. It's the strategies of Satan. God's never failed. He never will. He could close the hole in the heart of a child as he said tonight. And God can do the impossible in your life. Believe God tonight. Say, Lord, I'm going to go all in with what's on your heart. I'll give my best to the cause of Christ. And I'm trusting what I got at the house with you. Hey, let's believe God tonight. Whatever's on your heart, You can give it to God. Whatever you're struggling with tonight, bring it all to Him. Bring it all to Him. Jesus can fix it. And God can do big things. But we need you tonight. Oh, that the patch would mean something. It'd mean enough. Brother Austin, you sing, I need to hush. I wish I could preach it like I feel it tonight in my heart. The burden. Oh, the burden that's in my heart. When troubles come against me And I feel so overwhelmed When it seems the more I try giving My troubles seem to swell And when 
and I've reached the end of me and my faith is getting dim oh I hear a sweet voice whisper just bring it all to him so I'll just bring it all to him when no one understands when you're looking for an answer God always has a plan and when the burdens get so heavy bring him your pain and my side is bring him all your dim, broken dreams oh, bring him all your questions tonight pour it all out to God I can bring God it loves you he died for you God's here. got a plan God will be faithful in the throne room of my you do your part Lord, he'll do his tonight I find church. sweet relief I find God strength God to will. bear my burdens. I find comfort for my grief. Get your and dreams my back. Cup is overflowing. Get your heart back. And he feels Get your faith back. Ask God, God to help you tonight. Ask God to refire you tonight. Ask God to back the devil down. Ask God to push to back him. the enemy. And give so you what I'll you need. I'll just bring it all to him. God will when no one it's understands it when you're looking the for an the answer, God always the has a plan. The God will bring it to pass. And when the burdens get so heavy, God and lie. my side is God getting will get it dim, oh how God sweet tonight. it is Ask Him for the impossible. I can There's bring nothing it impossible all inside the will of God. Throne room of my Savior, I find sweet relief. I find strength oh, God, to bear my walking. burdens. I find comfort for my grief. And when my cup is overflowing, and He fills it to Folks the are rim, still coming. what Won't you come a tonight? blessed consolation! God's on your heart. Won't I can you bring come it all Won't you just bring it all to Him? To him. Tell God what's on so your heart. I'll just bring it all to Him when no one understands. When you're looking for an answer, God always has a plan. And when the burdens get so heavy and my sight is getting dim, oh, how sweet it is in knowing. I can bring it all to Him. Brother Austin's fixing to sing another verse tonight. And I know I didn't preach this way, but I just feel burdened to say it. If you're here tonight and you're not sure about salvation, you don't know about heaven, you're not sure about a, a, a man I called named Jesus Christ that could die for that died for you and you could go to heaven, or maybe you know all about it, but something ain't right. Maybe you're running from God. Maybe you're a lost church member. God can preach all that to you better than I can. Here's what I know tonight. If you know there's some needs in your life, I beg you to come down here. We'd just love to pray. We ain't going to make you say nothing, give nothing, sign nothing. We're just going to pray with you, love on you. We ain't going to make you do nothing. But while Christians are coming and people's pouring their heart out, I just wanted you to know that this altar's for you tonight. We'd love to pray with you. You could just bring it all to Him as well. While he sings, whatever your need, you mind God tonight. While he's here, may we seek the Lord while he may be found. May we just be tender to God. He's here. Don't miss him. When troubles come against me and I feel so overwhelmed when it seems the more I try giving my troubles seem to swell and when I've reached the end of me and my faith is getting dim oh I hear a sweet voice whisper just bring it all to him so I'll just bring it all to him when no one understands when you're looking for an answer, God always has a plan. And when the burdens get so
so heavy and my side is getting dim oh i hear a sweet voice whisper just bring it all to him in the throne room of my savior i find sweet relief i find strength to bear my burdens i find comfort for my grief when my cup is overflowing and he fills it to the rim what a blessed consolation i can bring it all to him so i'll just bring it all to him when no one understands when you're looking for an answer God always has a plan and when the burdens get so heavy and my side is getting dim oh how sweet it is in knowing I can bring it all to him so I'll just bring it all to him when no one understands when you're looking for an answer god always has a plan and when the burdens get so heavy and my side is getting dim oh how sweet it is in knowing i can bring it all to him in the throne room of my Savior, I find sweet relief. I find strength to bear my burdens. I find comfort for my grief. And when my cup is overflowing and he fills it to the rim, what a blessed consolation. I can bring it all to him. So I'll just bring it all to Him When no one understands When you're looking for an answer God always has a plan And when the burdens get so heavy And my side is getting dim Oh, how sweet it is in knowing I can bring it all to Him. And when the burdens get so heavy and my side is getting dim, oh, how sweet it is in knowing I can bring it all to Him. I've asked them to play just to these who are done praying. We never rush people in the altar. Maybe God's holding it out just for you. He's still squeezing on your heart. I ain't asking you to do anything except what heaven is. But boy, if you feel like God's squeezing on your heart, feel like something's on your mind, while these are praying, God may just be giving you a space while He plays for you to come, pour your heart out to God, whatever your need. He's faithful tonight. He will if you will. God bless them. God, you know what's on these men and women's heart. We agree with them. I agree with all these tonight. God, give us our dreams back. God, give us such a loyalty. God, them generations gone by, they had such a loyalty. Their word was their bond. God, give us a loyalty to Christ and the church and to the things of God and the people of God. Lord, give us such a almost like a military loyalty, a family, a brotherhood, where we'd be willing to say, I'd rather die than leave my brother in a spiritual battle. Oh, God, don't let us go in half-hearted. Don't let us go AWOL. God, don't let us disqualify ourselves from being able to touch heaven with sin that cripples our faith in our life. 
Oh, God, give us what we need tonight. God, raise us up to be warriors in this hour. Oh, God, may our flag and our Savior and our church and our people and these dreams and God, our lost people and everything in between, God, may all this mean us something and mean enough. We give our all for the cause. Oh, God, don't let us quit when the dream goes dark. That just, most time it's like Joseph. The darker it got, the closer he is getting to the throne and the dream and the destiny. God, some of us are fighting real bad and we're in real darkness just because just we're so close. And the devil knows time's running out. You're about to complete the dream. God, don't let us quit. God, don't let us give up, Miss Heaven's best. God, I pray you would absolutely give us a double portion of faith tonight. God, reaffirm, rekindle us, refire us, fill us full of faith and passion. God, let us see it afresh and anew. God, let us be reminded tonight the devil's a liar and God is up to some big things and he ain't gonna fail. He ain't gonna fail. Boy, some more comes tonight. Praise God for it. We'll never close down what God's doing. I'll say some things and we'll just let God do what he needs to do. But listen tonight, I, I might encourage you to do this in a message like this. I know how God's always helped me. It's hard on something so personal to do everything in front of everybody. And, you, and a lot of us come and pray, and that's a good start. But I want to encourage you before bedtime, find you a way to go outside at your house or somewhere on the drive home if you know a better spot. But there ain't nothing like, especially in these mountains, just to walk out somewhere and look up at them stars. Just you and God. And let God do some things in your heart. And let him reaffirm some things and just be reminded how big he is and how good he is and how much grace it is that a God that big would even know our name and look our way and you and God just have you a little season of time and go to bed saying, I pledge allegiance to that patch. I pledge allegiance to the Savior and the church he died for. If you want to know if you're right with God, I promise you, you'll love the church because that's God's heartbeat. That's what he died for. May you and God just have a little private moment of time. And I beg you, don't let this be the only, moment, the only time you come. You say, well, how come you know that about me, preacher? You know everybody. No, I don't. I have no idea face. But here's what I know. We ain't had near this crowd the first two nights. So that means there's a lot of folks here that ain't been. And I'm not, I thank God you come. Here's what I come to tell you tonight. Come on back. We need you. There's power in numbers. I pray you come tomorrow, Friday. We're believing God. Bring somebody lost if you can, but come praying, come believing. If you watch this on the live stream and you ain't here, I beg you to come if it's at all possible. Some other churches ain't got involved yet. You ought to. We love you and I love you, but you ought to be here. God's doing something in your town. God's counting on you. We'll be, listen, heaven, we go answers to God for it. And our churches need it. And our county needs it. And lost people need it. Saved people need it. Let's rally together in these days. And let's believe God. And I know there's been a lot of detours since last year. And some of your dreams have gone dark and heaven's gone dark. But hear me, God. That may be why God started so strong in this meeting because when we're weak, He's strong. And when we are down nothing, He really can be something. And it may be that we're just so close to God doing some big things in your life this year. Your dreams are that close to coming true. Them burns are fixing to become real blessings of answered prayers. Don't quit. Don't back up. Don't let off the gun. Don't let half your heart not be in the battle. Don't go AWOL. We need each other. Let's go for God. I love you tonight. I hope you know that. Some of the best Christians on this whole planet, I believe, are on this mountain tonight. Boy, you're, you're, you matter to God. We thank the world of you. I'm just trying to encourage you. The devil, listen, if he can get God's best, who cares about the rest? That's why you're fighting so hard tonight. It ain't because something's wrong. It's because something's right. Don't quit. Lay in there and go more than you ever have. Say, devil, if you're going to fight that hard, I'm going to pray. 
I'm going to believe and I'm going to have more passion than I ever have. And you watch if God don't reward you. I love you tonight. Thank you for being patient with me while I delivered what the Lord had on my heart. Let's go praying and believing. Pastor, you come. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, I echo what the man of God said. Find you a place tonight and do business with God if you haven't already. And uh, if you have done business, then still away and get along with God and thank God for what He has done in your heart tonight. I believe one of the greatest things you can do after a, a monumental night like tonight is to give God praise for what He has accomplished in you. And there have been some incredible transactions, eternal transactions, I would say, done in a lot of people's heart. And, and this, again, in closing, it's not even 9 o'clock. And Brother Heath, we've talked about this. We, we've been very deliberate this week. The mind gob also to respect you. And we know you work all day. And we've tried to start on time every night. And, and we recognize, you know, the sacrifice you're making kids are in school. And we so appreciate you being here. So let me give you some closing announcements uh, so you can take them with you. Before I do that, let me just remind you, if this is your first time, listen, you say, man, I've never been a part of this. You know, I, I, I've never been in a service where people jump up and they clap and they, they wave their hands and they shout and they make a lot of racket, a lot of noise. Uh, I, I've, I've been there. I get it. I understand where you're coming from. But listen to me. Our churches are dying. Yes, yes. And we have something to shout about. Yes. Our nation is losing hope, yet we have hope. The world needs mercy. They need to hear a jubilant, joyful, happy people. And we as God's people have every reason under heaven to be excited about the things of God. And when a man of God gets behind the pulpit and he preaches with a passion, don't you want to hear a man preach that actually believes what he's preaching? There are a lot of people that go to churches every week and they don't even know if the preacher believes what he is preaching. I'll tell you one thing about my friend Brother Heath. There is no doubt that the man believes everything he preaches to you. And that is worth its weight in gold. So this is a very special place. A very particular and very, could I use the word peculiar, meeting. But in this meeting, God will do things for you that you may not be able to explain for a long time, if ever. But God will change your life if you'll let it. Don't be afraid of what you don't know. Like he said, come back tomorrow night and say, Lord, I don't understand all the ins and outs of what you did last night or what that was, but I'm going to come back tomorrow night and I want more of it. Because America needs this. We need dreamers. Don't let go of it. And just like he's preached, if God puts it in your heart tonight, don't expect it to come true tomorrow morning. Hold on to those dreams and know that God in His perfect time will bring them to pass. And some of you need to be reminded by the Holy Spirit of God tonight. Let Him speak to you that God has not canceled those dreams in your life. God has not forgotten what He promised you. And some of you may feel like, well, I've done things along the way that I possibly canceled the dreams and the purpose of God. No. Nothing you've done has thwarted God's plan. Like Brother Heath preached, there are no secondary plans to God. God knows how to work everything out and bring you back to where He wants you to be. So thank you for being here. And don't forget, tomorrow evening, a very special night. Tomorrow morning, though, we have at 10.30, Brother Daniel will be preaching. He's preaching a tremendous series through the book of Ephesians in chapter number 6 on spiritual warfare. This morning was on Heaven's Central Intelligence. What the devil knows and what we can know about him, it was incredible. Uh, it is one of the most timely messages I've heard in a long, long time. And you need to go back and listen to that. So be with us 1030 tomorrow morning. Austin will be uh, singing and, and uh, giving us a special. and We'll have preaching, have lunch, and then tomorrow night, 620. All right? Everybody say it with me. 620. All right? I know you're working hard. And some of you are just you're trying to get in and you're 10, 15 minutes late. Come on. Don't, don't let that be a deterrent. But if you can, then try and get here so you can join us in praying around all 50 state flags and all U.S. territories and branches of the military. We believe on top of this mountain that prayer changes things. And then 7 o'clock tomorrow night, Brother Heath will be preaching once again. 
And so you don't want to miss that. So bring somebody with you like he said. And then Friday night is a big youth night. New Manna Youth Choir will be singing with us and being here in the service. And then next week, we have one more week scheduled. And the Powells will be singing for us on Monday and Tuesday night of next week. And so I've had a lot of you asking about that. They will bless your heart. And so, man, God is just getting started. I do believe that. All right. God bless you. You are at liberty to be dismissed. Be careful going out of here. We'll see you tomorrow.